C.S. Lewis is a bit smarter than we give him credit for. In Mere Christianity, he was talking about pride, and he said that pride is by its very nature competitive. That is, pride wants to be better than another. Whereas a sin like lust, you might immorally want a girl, you might lust after her. With pride, it's you want more than another man. And so, uh, whereas pride and lust, they might both push you to want this girl in an immoral way, lust, at least you want her for her sake. But with pride, you want her just so you can beat the other man. Pride is by its very nature competitive. And he talks about this with the news. In the news, very typically, you have your guy and the enemy, and you want your guy to be better than the enemy. In fact, if you read a story about your enemy, and it's a bad story, it makes your enemy look bad, and then a correction later comes out that shows he didn't look as bad bad as he, you previously thought, typically the reaction is to want to believe the initial version of the story, which makes your enemy look worse. Let me read you the quote directly. Suppose one reads a story of filthy atrocities in the paper. Then suppose that something turns up suggesting that the story might not be quite true or not quite so bad as it was made out. Is one's first feeling, thank God, even they aren't quite so bad as that? Or is it a feeling of disappointment and even a determination to cling to the first story for the sheer pleasure of thinking your enemies are as bad as possible? If it is the second, then it is, I am afraid, the first step in a process which, if followed to the end, will make us into devils. You see, one is beginning to wish that black was a little blacker. If we give that wish its head, later on we shall wish to see gray as black, and then finally to see white itself as black. Finally, we shall insist on seeing everything, God, our friends, and ourselves included, as bad, and not be able to stop doing it. We shall be fixed forever in a universe of pure hatred. An example of this was when we saw many media headlines reading, Donald Trump says that if he loses the election, it's going to be a bloodbath. Headlines like these. Trump warns U.S. voters of bloodbath if he loses presidential election. Or Trump predicts bloodbath if defeated at rally. Or Trump says there will be a bloodbath and elections will end if he isn't reelected. Trump says country faces bloodbath if Biden wins in November. Trump warns of bloodbath if he loses presidential election. Trump says there will be a bloodbath if he loses 2024 election, ramps up anti-migrant rhetoric. But then if we take a look at what he actually said, it's clear he was not talking about a bloodbath in the sense of violence. He was talking about the auto industry. In fact, let's watch the clip right here. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine. In context, it's pretty clear to see that Trump, when he used the term bloodbath, was talking about the auto industry. But that didn't stop news headlines from doubling down. Like the Los Angeles Times, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Trump campaign downplays remarks. So this is an example of wishing that your opponent were worse than he actually was. Then if we take a look at the response from liberals, just, you know, random people on social media, we'll get a good feel for how people are reacting to this. I mean, he did quite literally say, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the country.
if he wasn't such a poor communicator, his message wouldn't be confusing. I can see why they thought this. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath is the actual quote. I don't think a sane individual would use that particular verbiage in the context of car manufacturing. But did he really say it would be a bloodbath? Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. I don't think the video proved what you wanted it to prove. So even with the context showing that Trump is clearly fine here, these people are doubling down, wishing that the original story was true. The response should be, thank God, at least Trump isn't as bad as I thought he was. Now, conservatives are not innocent of this either. When a story comes out making Biden look bad, occasionally corrections will come out later showing that Biden wasn't as bad as we thought. And the conservative narrative is, no, he's still just as bad. Whereas our reaction should be, thank God. God, they're not as bad as we thought. As C.S. Lewis claims, we are beginning to wish that black was a little blacker. And when you start going down that path, it is so hard to turn it around. We must do as Christ commands and love our enemies. The more I progress in my Christian faith, the more I'm reminded of what Dostoevsky said. He said, if only it were necessary that there were evil people off here and we could just cut them off and separate them from society. But the more we study, the more we realize that the line separating good and evil runs through every human heart. We are in need of redemption just as much as our enemies. And so we should preach redemption to our enemies. We should love them and we should not always be searching to find the wickedness inside of them because there is wickedness inside of us too. And it's time for us to have some humility. It's time for us to genuinely follow Christ's teachings and to genuinely love our enemies. Just as we have been redeemed, they may be redeemed too. And that needs to be the goal that we are fighting towards.